everybody and welcome back to another episode of the League One Transfer Rumour Roundup. I know it has been a little while since the previous episode and I am sorry for that, but we are coming at you today with another episode and as per usual, there's a lot to go over so we will not waste any more time and we will dive straight in to the completed deals in League One since the previous video and it's fair to say there is a few. Burton Albion midfielder Bryn Morris has completed a move to League Two side Grimsby Town on a free transfer. Experienced midfielder Bradley Johnson has signed for MK Dons following his release from Blackburn Rovers. Burton Albion have completed the double signing of Dundee United midfielder Callum Butcher and Barnsley striker Victor Adeboyejo on free transfers. We spoke about this one in the previous episode, but Cambridge United have completed the signing of Bournemouth defender Zeno Ibsen Rossi for an undisclosed fee. My side Charlton Athletic have completed the signing of Swindon Town midfielder Jack Payne on a free transfer after he refused to sign a new contract at Swindon. If you guys would like to know more about this signing, then check out my Alex Edition series. And Albion's Ryan Leake has signed for Lee Two Side Salford City for an undisclosed fee. While Plymouth Argyle's Ryan Law has signed for Lee Two Side Gillingham in a season long loan. And Charlton striker Josh Davison has made his move away from the club on a permanent deal, linking up with former boss Johnny Jackson at AFC Wimbledon for an undisclosed fee. He's a decent Lee Two striker, having had good spells at that level with Forest Green and Swindon in the past. So I wish him all the best at AFC Wimbledon. Tottenham Hotspur goalkeeper Josh Oluwayemi has signed for Portsmouth on a free transfer. MK Dons' Toby Ugandega has signed for Sutton United on a free transfer. Forest Green Rovers have completed the signing of Swansea's Jacob Jones on a free deal. And we spoke about this one way back in January, but Philadelphia Union centre-back Stuart Finlay has made his move to League One, signing for Oxford United for an undisclosed fee, coming in, of course, as Luke McNally's replacement. Swansea attacker Morgan Whitaker has made his return to League One and has signed for Plymouth Argyle on a season-long loan. He, of course, spent the second half of last season out on loan at Lincoln City. Bolton Wanderers have delved into the Irish market and have signed Owen Toll from Derry City for an undisclosed fee. Sheffield Wednesday centre-back Sam Hutchinson has made the move to the championship signing for Reading on a free transfer. Must admit I was very surprised that Hutchinson uh, left Sheffield Wednesday. Edward McGinty has signed for Oxford United from Sligo Rovers coming in as a youthful goalkeeping option. Fleetwood Town have signed Promise Omashire from Irish Premiership side Bohemians for an undisclosed fee. Cheltenham Town have completed the signing of experienced Gillingham fullback Ryan Jackson on a free transfer. Barnsley fullback slash wingback slash midfielder Callum Britton left Barnsley and signed for Blackburn Rovers for an undisclosed Feed this. We spoke about this one in the previous episode, but Colby Bishop's move to Portsmouth has been finalised. He has left Accrington Stanley and has joined Fratton Park for an undisclosed fee. Massive signing for Pompey that. I think he's going to be a really big signing in their attacking department. Really going to offer them something and he will definitely bag goals for them. And Bristol City midfielder Tariq Bakinson has made his return to League One. He spent the second half of last season with Ipswich Town on loan. This time has made a permanent move to League One, signing for Darren Moore's Sheffield Wednesday. Oxford United have completed the signing of CSK Sophia winger Yannick Wildschutz for an undisclosed fee. Cheltenham Town have been fairly busy in the transfer window since the previous video completed the signings of James Taylor from Bristol City on loan, Caleb Taylor from West Bromwich Albion on loan and Reading goalkeeper Luke Southwood on loan. Southwood being, I think, a really good signing for Cheltenham. I think they've done really well. MK Donzies' Brandon Mason has signed for Crawley Town for a free transfer. And with one wingback stroke fullback leaving the club, they have brought one in in the signing of Chelsea fullback Henry Lawrence on a season-long loan. He spent last season on loan at arch rivals AFC Wimbledon, so that is certainly going to upset the Wimbledon fans. Brighton and Hove Albion youngster Jensen Weir has made his return to League One, this time signing for Morecambe in a season-long loan. He spent last season on loan at Cambridge United. Accrington Stanley love to recruit in non-league and they have gone and done it again with the signing of striker Al Haji Toure Sisse from Haverford West. I do apologise if I have mispronounced that. Port Vale have completed the signing of experienced League One midfielder Gavin Massey from Wigan on a free transfer. I do really like this signing. Ipswich Town continue to break the bank after they've completed the signing of Leeds left back Leif Davis for an undisclosed fee reported to be around £2 million. So quite an extortionate fee if I say so myself considering he is still an unproven player. But if City's Josh Murphy has signed for Oxford United on a free transfer, I really like this one. I think he's definitely going to add something for Oxford's wide options. Definitely a good sign for League One level. Michael Morrison has made his return to League One since he won the League One title with my side, Charlton Athletic. It's been absolutely donkey since he's been at League One level, but he has made his return signing for Danny Cowley's Portsmouth from Reading on a free transfer. Really looking forward to seeing how Morrison gets on at Portsmouth. I think he's definitely going to add something to their defensive line. 
yeah, really excited about this one. Exeter City have finally kicked off their transfer business with the signings of Southampton midfielder Keggs Chorke and at Huddersfield Town goalkeeper Jamal Blackman. Chorke coming in on a loan deal, Blackman coming in on a free transfer. Portsmouth shop stopper Alex Bass has signed for Sunderland for an undisclosed fee, hence the need for the signing of Olawoyemi. Port Vale have been keeping fairly busy recently in the transfer window. They have completed the signings of Thierry Small on loan from Southampton, Will Forrester on a free deal from Stoke City and Derek Agyakwa from Watford on a free transfer. Do apologise if I have butchered that name. Tottenham Hotspur protege Dane Scarlett has signed for Portsmouth on a season-long loan. Really excited to see how he gets on. Of course, we all know him as an England youth prospect and is supposed to be one of the more up-and-coming prospects in English football right now. So, MK Dons have completed the signing of Daniel Oyagoke from Brentford on a season-long loan. And Burton Albion have also delved into the Premier League loan market, completing the signing of Everton midfielder Tyler Onyango on a season-long loan. Onyango did sign a new deal at Everton before completing the loan move. Accrington Stanley have again delved into the non-league market, completing the signing of Enoch Luciama from Daisy Hill on a free transfer. Walsall attacking midfielder Rory Holden has signed for Port Vale for an undisclosed fee. And Cambridge United have boosted their attacking options further with the signing of Doncaster striker Fajiri Okenabiri on a free transfer. I do like this one. I think Okenabiri on his day can find the back of the net at League One level, but he is under a lot of competition with the likes of Joe Ironside, Sam Smith and and Psycho Genet. Plymouth Argyle have completed the signing of Wolverhampton Wanderers defender Nigel Lonwick on a season-long loan. Again, I do apologise if I butchered that name. There's going to be a lot that I'm going to butcher in this series, that's for sure. A massive loss for Peterborough United this one as attacking midfielder Sammy Smodix has signed for Blackburn Rovers on an undisclosed fee. That is... A big loss. There were a couple of transfers that have since gone through in League One that were supposed to be rumours in this video, but as I just mentioned, they have just gone through. Connor Wickham has completed his move to Forest Green Rovers on a free transfer following his release from MK Dons. The 29-year-old has signed a deal only until January as they are obviously looking to boost their attacking options. Obviously, with Matt Stevens being out injured, they needed to have another attacking options and they've got that with Wickham. He has struggled for game time in recent years since leaving Crystal Palace and he is getting on a little bit now at 29 so he could maybe offer them something it's not the most inspiring of signings hence probably why that they've given him only a short-term deal until January and Derby County have won the race for Everton striker Lewis Dobbin on a season-long loan the 19 year old impressed for the under 23s last season playing 18 games scoring six goals and two assists and he also made three appearances in the Premier League last year and just a few minutes ago Oxford United have completed the signing of Leeds United midfielder Lewis Bates the 19 year old joining the Kassam Stadium on a season-long loan. So there are all of the completed deals that have gone through in League One since the previous episode. Now, without any further hesitation, let's dive straight into some transfer rumours. We always seem to kick off these videos with my club, Charlton Athletic, and we're going to be doing it once again. There has been a very interesting rumour coming out of SE7 recently, as the South London Press reported last week, I do believe, that we are in negotiations to sign Crystal Palace's Jusserun Raksaki. We did speak about Raksaki, I think, in the previous video, one of the the previous videos before the last one but we spoke about how Raksaki was apparently attracting interest from Liam Manning's MK Dons it has since been reported that MK Dons' interest has collapsed so Charlton are among a number of clubs now that are interested in the prospect of course Raksaki has just come off a stupidly good season with Crystal Palace's under 23s 25 games 18 goals and six assists there's no denying it will be a very very exciting signing and I do to an extent, believe that we could do with another option out wide because, of course, we do have Blackett Taylor, we've got Charlie Kirk, we've got uh, Dianang Jaisimi. Uh, Jaisimi, of course, is the only naturally right sided winger, and Raksaki is a right sided winger, but I believe can also play through the middle. Now, obviously, I do have my concerns as to whether Raksaki will actually play for us, and there has been some arguments, you know, why are we not developing our own players and why are we developing a Crystal Palace player, of course. Uh, of all clubs. I think he does need some minutes. I think League One would be the perfect move for him. I think MK Dons, to be fair, would have been a really good fit. But with Charlton, there is competition. There certainly is competition in our side. But we will just have to wait and see where this one goes. With the South London Press reporting it, it is fairly concrete. I would say, with the rumours coming out over the last few weeks... I'd say it's incredibly likely that Raksaki could end up in League One this season, which would be a very exciting bit of business. And speaking of Charlton's out-wide options, I did just mention him briefly, and we have spoken about him multiple times across this series, but Charlie Kirk's name has popped up once again in the transfer window with a move away from the Addicts. It was first reported by Football League World, and I wasn't too keen 
opinion as to whether to believe it, but the South London press did come out and confirm this. Charlie Kirk is attracting interest from Championship sides Reading, a familiar face in Blackpool, and the Scottish Premiership side Hibernian. Kirk did feature on the subs bench in our opening day of the season against Accrington Stanley. He came on in the 86th minute and including the six minutes of injury time, which I won't go into the details of what happened in injury time, but uh, he played about 10 minutes. And yeah, obviously the South London Press has since reported that he is attracting interest again. Um, I'm not surprised, to be honest. I'm not massively surprised. I mean, Kirk, let's be real. It's a transfer that hasn't really worked out. And obviously I would like him to stay. Of course I would. I would like him to stay because I think he would be a very good option at League One level because I think especially in this system as well under Ben Garner because he plays a system that uh, Kirk is familiar with. Obviously, Crew played a 4-3-3 and Kirk's best position is the left side of a 4-3-3, which is exactly the system that we play. However, Kirk does have competition in that spot because I think that left side of the front three is Corey Blackett-Taylor's spot to lose because Blackett-Taylor... I think he's going to be a big asset for us this season and Kirk needs to compete with him. Obviously, Blackpool had the option to make a deal, a permanent transfer when he made the move to them on loan last season, but they pulled out of it as they couldn't afford the fee that we agreed, which, of course, was half a million pounds. So I would consider Blackpool unlikely to get this deal done unless, of course, they just fork out half a million quid out of nowhere, which, considering he only played nine times in the second half of last season, probably wouldn't be the smartest of moves, in my personal opinion. And then Reading, I would consider unlikely as well with their current situation. I believe they're still under a transfer embargo, and I've seen some rumours that they can only sign free agents, so I would consider Reading very unlikely to sign uh, Kirk if that is the case. Then there's obviously the Hibernian link, which, of course, is up north. Kirk is obviously from up north and that's familiar surroundings for him but obviously it's Scotland. It's like way up north to where he uh, is familiar with. So it's going to be an interesting one. It's going to be one to keep an eye on whether Kirk obviously does want to leave Charlton. I'm not entirely sure but the reality is it's a move that hasn't worked out. It's a transfer that hasn't worked out. And truth be told, if we got the right fee for him, which in this case would be half a million pound, I would sell Kirk and he obviously needs to replace him, which then, of course, is perfect for us to get Raksaki in because uh, we do need to obviously replace Kirk if he does leave. But yeah, this will be one to keep an eye on over the next week or so. But yeah, I would say it's more likely than ever that Kirk will leave Charlton this summer, but we will wait and see. I would I would like him to stay, but I would also sell him if the price is right. There's been a big rumour going on at Derby County in terms of an outgoing as their young midfielder, Jason Knight, has been attracting a lot of championship interest. Vincent Companies Burnley were interested in Jason Knight, but it has been reported recently by Pete O'Rourke that Birmingham City are now interested in the signing of Jason Knight. Now, Knight... Over the last couple of years at Derby has become a regular in their sides. Last season, during their relegation campaign, played 38 times, getting two goals and three assists. Obviously, Knight did feature in the first game of the season against Oxford United on the weekend. He was playing at right back, which I thought was quite interesting. Uh, I don't know if that's going to be a position that he's going to be playing regularly if he is to stay. But obviously, they, he is attracting a lot of championship interest. Obviously, Birmingham probably wouldn't be the smartest of moves considering their club's current situation. Of course, Birmingham have already signed a Derby County midfielder in Christian Bielik. I forgot to mention that, actually. For some reason, it wasn't on uh, BBC Sports uh, transfer page. But yeah, Christian Bielik has moved uh, to Birmingham in a season-long loan, which I thought was quite an interesting one. Obviously, you could argue it is a step down with Birmingham's current situation, but at the end of the day, it is a division up. And obviously, Bielik has struggled with injury since joining Derby. I would have said if Derby would have kept him. I think he would have been a really good player for them at League One. They've obviously smashed it when he was with Charlton uh, the season we got promoted. I think it is a good signing for Birmingham, provided Bielik can stay fit. But they are now interested in the signing of Jason Knight, which, like I said, if Derby were to lose him, I think it would be quite the loss. And following the signing of Lewis Dobbin, I would consider this one to be a bit unlikely, considering their attacking options are looking quite healthy at the moment. They've obviously got Dobbin in, and they've also got youngster Drax Stretton, and they've also signed James Collins and David McGoldrick in the transfer window. But one player that Derby have also been linked with in the attacking department is West Ham youngster Armstrong Oko Flex, which I must admit is one of the coolest names I think I've ever heard of. But it appears that the Hammers are prepared to let Oko Flex go on loan. He is set to depart the club on a temporary basis, with Derby County being one of the clubs interested. Now, Armstrong has had a pretty decent season for West Ham's under-23, scoring 12 goals and one assist in 23 matches, which is a really impressive record at that level. And only 20 years old, I think it is probably the time that he does move away from West Ham and he does get some regular minutes. Like I said, with the signing of Lewis Dobbin, I would consider Derby to be, I don't know, unlikely. But of course, if they want to strengthen their options, 
positions. I mean, it looks like the outgoing right back Nathan Byrne is set to tie up a move to MLS side Charlotte FC following his departure from Pride Park earlier in the summer. I was actually going to talk about in this video how Byrne was considered to be an option for Michael Beale's Queens Park Rangers, but no, it does now look like, according to Pete O'Rourke, that Byrne is set to sign for Charlotte FC in the MLS with the player currently over in America. He had been a regular for Derby over the last couple of years, playing 41 games in the previous two seasons. Loved the, the yellow card and a red card. Got 12 yellow cards and one red last season, 10 yellow cards the season before. So his disciplinary record is a bit all over the place. But yeah, Byrne does look set to head over to the MLS. Hebrew United chairman Dara McAntony has dismissed rumours that Joe Ward has been linked to a move to Portsmouth. It was believed that Pompey had been interested in the 26-year-old wingback, but the chairman has come out and completely debunked these rumours now. Yeah, Ward obviously has a promotion on his CV with Peterborough from the last time they were in League One. Obviously, last season was a bitterly disappointing season with them going straight back down. Ward did feature in the opening day of the season against Cheltenham Town, in which they came back from 2-0 down to win 3-2. And it also looks like Portsmouth will be missing out on Tottenham Hotspur striker Keon Itete as the striker looks set to sign for championship side Cardiff City for on a permanent deal. Pompey had been interested in the striker. Itete, of course, spent last season on loan at Northampton and Cheltenham respectively. Had a better stint at League One level with Cheltenham, but still relatively, I hesitate to say unproven. I mean, to be fair, he did get himself six goal contributions in 13 games for Cheltenham, which is pretty decent. But yeah, I'm not sure if the move to the championship is the right one. Obviously, it may be a step too far because I think in terms of the championship, I don't think he's quite there yet. I think he still needs a bit more development. I would have thought that a move to Portsmouth would have been decent. But then again, obviously, Pompey have recently just signed Dane Scarlett, another Tottenham youngster. They've obviously got... Uh, Joe Piggott and Colby Bishop as well. So they could maybe have done with another option there. But yeah, it looks like Atete will be linking up with Steve Morrison and will be joining Cardiff on a permanent deal. However, it does look like Pompey are set to sign a new player in the next coming hours, I would reckon. And they look like they've got Marcus Harness's replacement in the signing of Blackpool winger Owen Dale. It looks very likely that the 23-year-old will be joining Fratton Park on a season-long loan. That is what has been reported all over the place on Twitter in the last few minutes. Now, obviously, we know Dale from his time at Crew Alexandra in that season when they finished mid-table. He played 43 times for Alexandra, scoring 11 goals. That, of course, earned him his move to Blackpool after a, a bit of a contract dispute and I think him refusing to play for the club. He ended up heading to Blackpool on loan initially, but then Blackpool made that move a permanent deal where it hasn't really worked out so far. In total, he played 14 times for Blackpool last season, getting himself two goals at championship level, so not the best of returns. So maybe a move down to League One is what's best for him. And obviously, Portsmouth are in need of more wide options with the departure of Marcus Harness. Wouldn't be surprised if this deal is done by the time this video does come out. So keep an eye on this one. I think this is a very good sign for Portsmouth. Honestly, midfielder stroke left wing back Callum Styles is attracting interest abroad as Turkish giants Besiktas are interested in the 22 year old Hungarian international. Now, Styles obviously was supposed to be one of the most, you know, promising championship players last season. But it's fair to say that he didn't really live up to the hype last season in what was a very poor season for Barnsley. Life. And yeah, Besiktas are interested in the 22-year-old. So this will be very interesting to see if this one does go through. As I said, Styles had a lot of hype about him, but he didn't really live up to the bill uh, last season. Manchester United goalkeeper Nathan Bishop is tipped to sign for Gareth Ainsworth Wickham Wanderers on a season-long loan. However, according to the Suns' Alan Nixon, and it is said that United are looking to sign a shot stopper before they can sanction Bishop's exit. Lookham, of course, are in need of a new goalkeeping option with David Stockdale going. Bishop obviously spent last season with Mansfield Town where he played every single game for them, including the playoff semi-finals and the final. So 49 appearances in total, keeping 15 clean sheets. So could definitely be a useful option in between the sticks for Wickham if this one is to go through. Cambridge United boss Mark Bonner is wanting to loan out to the 20-year-old Ben Warman as soon as possible to get him some regular in a minutes in another division. Warman, of course, played 13 times at League One level last season, getting himself one goal. So it is clear that the player is in need of some more minutes. And of course, Cambridge, as I've just mentioned previously, have strengthened quite a lot in the transfer window. Obviously, they have already got Ironside and Smith, and they have also brought in Psycho Gene and Fajiri or Kenabiri. We spoke about this one in the previous video, but it has been officially confirmed that Bristol Rovers have put in an official bid for AFC Wimbledon midfielder Luke McCormick as they attempt to re-sign the 23 
23 year old of course McCormick spent uh, the previous uh, stint when Bristol Rovers were in League One 2020-21 getting himself six goals and two assists from 39 games last season with AFC Wimbledon got himself seven goals and seven assists so a really impressive season in what was a very disappointing campaign for Wimbledon where they got rid of themselves relegated and didn't win a single game from December 7th so McCormick obviously has two back-to-back -back relegations on his CV from this division however in the two sides that he has played with no disrespect to Bristol Rovers or Wimbledon has definitely been one of the most standout players in a very poor side for both teams so it's no real surprise really that Rovers are looking to re-sign him back and for 200k I think it is a pretty decent deal and I think McCormick is a decent player at this level he's proven that into like I said, two very underwhelming sides. So it'll be interesting to see where this one goes. But Johnny Jackson is under a bit of pressure to keep hold of one of his key assets. He's obviously already lost Jack Rigadoni and he does look set to lose McCormick. And then we will wrap it up with a bit of Sheffield Wednesday news. And once again, we are talking about the Malik Wilkes deal. However, it has been reported recently that Wednesday are remaining hopeful that they can get this deal done come the end of the window. And that's all I'm going to say about it. <laughs> that is all I'm going to say about this deal because I've spoken about it way too many times in previous videos. But just know that this deal is not quite dead and buried just yet. Wednesday are still looking to get this one completed. Wilkes, of course, does want to leave Hull. He does want to move to Wednesday. There has been disputes over the transfer fee. Now to favour Wednesday forward, Silas Sow looks set to head back to Holland with a second division side, De Grafschnap. Definitely butchered that. They have recently confirmed their interest in the 25-year-old. Of course, Wednesday did sign Sow following his release from Eredivisie side one week at the start of last season. And it is pretty fair to say that he has struggled for minutes at Wednesday, playing just 17 times last season, getting himself four goals two of which being in League One and the other two being in the Papa John's Trophy. And obviously Sal is way down the pecking order in terms of Wednesday's attackers with the likes of Gregory Patterson, Smith and Windass ahead of him. So it does look likely that Sal will be leaving Wednesday this summer. But without question, one of the biggest rumours that has been going around the transfer window so far in recent weeks especially, is Sheffield Wednesday's interest in Rangers forward Kemar Roof. This would be... Just an unbelievable signing if they can pull this one off. If they can get Roof and Wilkes in, Jesus Christ. This Roof has had an incredible record at Rangers over the last few years. Scored a couple of goals in the Europa League and obviously has really torn up the Scottish Premiership and obviously has really good records in England as well with Oxford and Leeds especially. Also had a pretty decent spell at Anderlecht over in Belgium recently. So yeah, the 29-year-old, it would be a real statement of intent if they were to get this signing over the line. And the same with the Wilkes deal, but we will wait and see where this one goes. I do believe the deal in question would see Roof join the club on loan but I'm not entirely sure I think it was a loan deal but yeah nevertheless Roof would be a stupidly good player to have at League One level oh that is it for this episode of the League One transfer room roundup I hope you guys did enjoy this video if you did can you possibly leave a like subscribe if you are new to the channel and turn on those post notifications so you are notified of every time I upload a new video what do you guys think about the completed deals and rumors spoke about in this video let me know in the comments below have I missed any rumors out let me know in the comments below of course I can't go through every single one as we will be here until next month so yeah get those down in the comments below thank you again for watching this video this has been tyler Ronaldson. have a nice day and i will see you all in the next video take it easy stay safe and i will see you all then